Good morning, folks. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV. Welcome to The OC Show, Season 4, Episode 15. Uh, this one was supposed to be last week, but we are not able to do it because I was at TwitchCon. And, uh, well, uh, let's say that uh, we're a little bit overwhelmed by everything that was happening there. That was an awesome weekend. Can't have the time to go back to that uh, along, the, along the show tonight. Tonight with me on the show, we have uh, Tullius and Buildzoid. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey guys! Hi! <laughs> Alright, it's good to, to have you uh, guys back on the show. It's been two weeks since the last one. There's uh, quite a few things that happened, but hopefully that was a pretty easy week on the competition to lose. Yeah, th this is this is this is basically um, there's not much happening. This is like this is like a cold month. Uh, I mean, it's just it's the take it easy month after all the hectic stuff that went on over the last couple of months with the. With the whole team cup and the pro overseas division rounds and all of that stuff, so a lot of a lot of competitions just ended. So I guess a I guess a small break is worth it before like you know the country cup and all of that starts back up in like November and December. It's gonna get hectic again. So this is the month to take it a little bit a little easy. Not much going on. Um, there's we have of course we have the HW Bot World Tour that happened in in uh, Taipei. There was like the amateur contest and obviously also the qualifiers which. Uh, Lucky Noob won, so he's he's got himself a ticket. He's 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 coming to the to the finals, you know. So that 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 happened. He actually flew all the way from from Indonesia to yeah. Taiwan. Just flew all the way from <laughs> Indonesia just for that. Actually, it's starting to pay off by people to flew out to some local competition for the OCWC. I mean, Wizardy <laughs> did the same in in Moscow. Yeah, he won there. Crazy, <clears throat> to, totally, and like, um, yeah. So the amateur contest happened. Lots of, I mean, this was only open to the people from from Taiwan. I think lots of lots and lots of Taiwanese people went there. And um, we have, of course, we have the rookie rumble, and we've got the ROG showdown that's actually going on right now as we speak. The ROG was supposed to show down and seeing a great, uh, massive amount of action actually. Seventy-seven teams, so a lot of teams competing. Right now, you've got uh, Reddit, the overclocking team there. Totally in the lead. Um, Overclock.net is is second. There's 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 a pretty decent gap actually. Uh, 220 points to 202, and then the French Legion Legion is had 182 points. There's nine days left to go, so bang baggy. <laughs> but uh, yeah. bags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, so, that's gonna yeah. That's going to send back for sure. Uh, for sure. It is. So, for sure. Totally. And um, the Aces Republic of Gamers team is actually fourth, so not bad at all. Not bad at all. They mm. should be first. Uh, it's their own competition. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right now Reddit's Reddit's actually looking good. So stage one was uh, stage stage one was XTU at five gigahertz, um, which you know Reddit's Reddit's in the lead, and then rookies of the United States and Aces Republic of Gamers, and then you have you have stage two, which was uh, basically. Hang on, now why isn't it loading? Great. <laughs> Great. The site has been acting freaky for me all day long. But yeah, I mean, so... Well, okay, well, it's not loading. Anyway, so Reddit's, Reddit's in the lead right now. Um, I'll just I'll just skip to the Rookie Rumble. Rookie Rumble, we've got the Intel and the AMD. Uh, Rookie Rumble, uh, the Intel side is still open. Another seven days to go. And we've got uh, Wickport. Wickport, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hannibal Lecter, I like the name, and Orion 2358. So that's one, two, and three. And then we got Ackerman and Lambo in fourth and fifth. So um, yeah, Rookie Rumble is looking good. There's there's already 195 overclockers in here. Rookie Rumbles have been getting a lot and lot of action, like throughout. Then that's I'm just really happy to see that. Like every single Rookie Rumble has got a whole bunch of overclockers, at least on the Intel side. So that's kudos. That's really, really nice. And then you've got the MD side, which is also, well, six overclockers yet, not as many people overclocking on, on AMD, but well, still, there's still, there's still, I mean, this is just an easy chance to make some points, guys. I mean, if there's any rookies who, you know, have some AMD gear and like, you know, and can bench, bench. I mean, just post scores at this point, you, you know, you, you're definitely going <laughs> to... That's 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 an easy point to make an opportunity, but and yeah, that's that, that's about it. And like like we said, um, it's a relatively cold, easy going month this month. Not much happening. 
All right, so the uh, OC Showdown team edition will be closing in about nine days from now. So if you guys uh, still want to participate, that's the fucking time. The effing time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> All right, um, some other big score from this week. What uh, what happened? Like, Steponzi did post something Stephon very interesting smashed. today. Yeah, he smashed yeah. the wine world record. Destroyed it. Destroyed it. So it destroyed the three mark vantage performance world record at uh, 139,523 points. Yeah. That's and a... that was on two GTX 1080 Ti's under liquid nitrogen and the i9 7960X also under liquid nitrogen. Um, that what was, was it? Was five point eight to run that system? <laughs> Must have been. Must have been. Yeah. Safe. And. Yeah. Yeah, the GPUs were, you know, the EVGA Kingpin editions. Um, I think the motherboard used was the X299 OC formula. Yes, uh, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and I wonder what LN2 pot he was using. Oh, he mentions it, so... It's a Kingpin one Venom for sure. Venom CPU. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a Kingpin cooling uh, Venom pot. So I wonder if he's gotten that new, like, high, the, based, uh, the, new the styling. bigger base, yeah, for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, also, uh, yeah, that's an interesting, that's an interesting point. I'm dying to yeah. see what what that guy can do because if yeah, then that's what that's in my future as well. well that, that's a crazy score. <laughs> that was <laughs> like that was chew through so much liquid nitrogen because Vantage is one of the longest running 3D benchmarks out there. Agreed. Like you get basically four minutes of 3D, so that's babying the GPUs for four minutes, and then you get CPU a torture test at the end. So. Yeah, yeah that's, you have to be sure that your CPU one. will be uh, will be very stable all the way down. Actually, yeah, he was actually posting uh, CPU pretest scores on Facebook a while ago, yeah. just, just showing that it was running stable through that that the, the last two tests. Because especially on like Skylake X, th these pull almost as much power as a uh, <laughs> GPU. <laughs> <So it's laughs> like, <laughs> this must have been like. I wonder if this was a three PSU system. Just, just, you know, one PSU for every, <laughs> for CPU, one for... <laughs> yeah. one for well, GPU. actually, you know what? Uh, I think it was using the EVGA 1600 watts um, PSU. That's the one that Vince used when he set up the, uh, like, the four-way 1080 Ti uh, record thing. Yeah, but, like, one of them wouldn't power this. Like, I can pretty no, much no, get uh, that. One, one PSU down. for the, the whole system is not going to work. That, that That's going to trigger the OCP for sure. But um, I remember that Vince, I talked with Vince because he was posting, uh, EVGA did post a picture uh, of one setup with the two um, VGA and two PSUs. And I asked yeah. Vince, is that the only one you use? And he says, I can't tell. So that means he had one PSU per, per VGA and one for the main board. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Thinking as well. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's a photo of Vince benching four-way where there's literally a stack of four power supplies next to Well, uh, <laughs> I remember back in the days when he was shooting the uh, 3D Eclipse, when he was, like, uh, doing some, like, the... If you can, if you like, if you look for 3D Eclipse EVGA on YouTube, you can, you can find back this, uh, this one. Uh, I was doing the video shoot with them, actually, at the time, and that was insane. Like, literally, like, four PSUs, like, trigger, like, one, two, three, four, and then start benching, it's like... What the hell? <laughs> but then what's funny is like they they were basically almost all on the same plugs in the wall as well. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay. think not. about that. I think that was the 1200 watt at the time. Uh, you have four PSUs, 1200 watt each. <laughs> Jesus. That, that, that's like, Jesus. like 48, uh, 4800 watts. <laughs> <on the, laughs> what? Yeah, that's crazy. It, it's nuts. I mean, even today, just 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 thinking about running a dual GPU and and like a monster Skylake setup, you're talking, you would want to give it at least a minimum of 1200 watts per card and CPU. So like you're looking at 3600 watts just to bench two. Yeah, I mean, that, if I yeah. Well, that's, you wouldn't actually be running like that level of power constantly, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 by the time you like the CPU tests would basically do no load on the GPUs and GPUs. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but, but like, reverse I mean, is almost true for the GPU for state, the, GPU the, uh, part. But yeah, correct. But so so, I mean, a, just like thinking about the peaks and stuff like that, you yeah. feel you wouldn't feel 
you you feel a lot more comfortable just knowing that you've got 1200 watts and backing you know each card just at least a thousand but 1200 I mean, APAC benched, uh, what was it, four-way on just two of those 2,000 watts. 2,000 watts, yeah. 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 So it's not like you, but I mean, because for that's because it load every, shares, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. You and couldn't really go like four 1,000 watts. I, I don't sure. think it would work out if you tried to do that, even if like two 2,000s would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite impressive. So to, to get this core out, this... Uh, uh, what was it already like uh, 139,523 mark on 3 mark Vantage performance core. Uh, Stepan Z was actually at almost 2,500 megahertz for the core clock with the boost and uh, a little bit above 1,600 for, for the memory. And that's actually funny. One thing is like if you look at the, at the screenshot, it says bearded hardware. And that's something he's working on for the past few weeks as well. So it was supposed to release some videos and it was like, not happy with the quality, so let's say he fucked up when recording. <laughs> that's a nice way of yeah, saying that. Yeah, he wasn't happy with the audio at all. Blame yeah, that, that, that's kind of yeah. that kind of say like I fucked up, so I need to train more. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm just saying Black. that. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to him about that yet. But uh, yeah, that's no, good. I'm, uh, that, I'm, I, I like the way that most of the overclockers are starting to have like their own um, logos and thing, and not just their. Um, and their, their nickname out there. So I know that Wizard is working on something. I know that uh, Dr. Wiz had something as well in the pipe. Bilzoid, you have uh, the uh, actual yard core overclocking as well. So that's good. Uh, I mean, that, that's good for, for the for the community and that's good for actually showing around what uh, what, what can be done for that. So that's uh, that's pretty good. That's a good, uh, good, uh, good score that you made here. I don't think that's going to last very long, to be honest. I'm expecting that in the next two to three weeks, there's going to be a more... Uh, crushing of that score uh, coming don't from think the 18 core would help i think like we'll, we'll, we'll probably see higher clocks on similar hardware but i don't think the 18 core helps on vantage no no uh, no no i mean just the score will uh, will be increasing but yeah i'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of okay with um kind of i do kind of agree with you on that it's not because there will be like two more cores that uh, that's going to change anything at this point but um, I guess that most and more and more people will be able to tune in a little bit more each of the graphic cards they get. I mean, especially the 1080 Ti Kingpin Edition were super hard to get. So I get that if more and more people start to get it. Uh, keep in mind as well that there is the GOC coming in about uh, three weeks from now, two weeks, in it. yeah, three weeks from now, on the 17th yeah. of uh, November. And they all have, so let's say like all the contestants that qualified for the GOC, they all have a 1080 Ti Galax Oscillab edition. So that means that these boards were used and for the qualifier, them at, there's and there's more, more than than at the event, at the event as well. So I'm I'm expecting to see before maximum mid November that's going to be taken down. Uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure that Vince and and Stepans will be working together to, uh, by trying to <laughs> to get that score <laughs> on. But well, that's uh that's what it is. Right, uh, well, that was a, a nice core. Uh, welcome, guys. If you would just join us, this is The OC Show, Season 4, Episode 15. And uh, that's uh, the show we talk about hardware, news, drama, and everything we have been doing at Overclocking TV and in the background for Buildzoid and Tullius. And actually, last weekend, we were not able to do the uh, this episode because I was at TwitchCon. And that was... Okay, I have to say it. Okay, I have, I have my T-shirt. You know, Twitch partner with the... Uh, I have my... CTV name in the back and all that's awesome. That's all the partner that add that. Woohoo! Thank you, Twitch. Uh, I have I have to say I, I think I've I've done like twelve or thirteen convention this year. This one is by far, but by far the best one in terms of vibes for the people okay, that were attending. In terms of things that were going on, the panel were nice. You can feel that the people there were actually passionate about what they do. They they really leave that they don't just do that for work or it's not a just a job for them for some of them because actually most of them don't have job for that but you can feel it that it was like really 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 nice we had a we had some good time with uh with some of the other twitch creative guys uh, because as you know like we stream on talk show most of the time on uh on on twitch like right now but most of the time when we do the overclocking that's actually in the creative section so we spent some time with uh, the folks at uh, KPAC Fashion, so K and Moose. They are Canadian as well, so I was helping them out a little bit to reach around the show. Awesome people, super positive. If you have to, 
if you have to go check out something that is different from what we do here, uh, that is totally family friendly and all, uh, it's K-Pack Fashion. I will post the link in the uh, in, in the live chat later on tonight. Uh, go check them out. Just give them a follow. Uh, there is as well uh, Ustan that was I actually spent most of the time with Ustan. He's from uh, Pudget System, and he's uh, he was also part of the uh, of the commentary team for the Performance Matter in Moscow. Awesome guy, big bird, like super super positive and cool. And I mean, Bilzer, you had the chance to to talk a little bit more with him. Um, during and after the uh, the performance matter show, so um, how how was it to to talk with uh, with Ustan? Uh, I can't remember right now. Oh <laughs> no, come on! <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, no, um, that, that get, get a different perspective on uh, on computer hardware because ultimately it's just like I play old games and then I abuse modern graphics cards. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's just a that's just a that's just a way. But yeah, like lo honestly, awesome people. A lot of uh, people from like anywhere in the world. People we knew from the industry. I even managed to steal one of the staff badge, but I was not able to bring it back home. Sadly, so I had like this staff badge, I, and I was like, okay, yeah, sure, let's take the picture. I'm staff now. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, who I found there. Luke, Luke from Linus Tech Tips. He was there on oh, the uh, Intel booth doing some PC building yeah, uh, things. Yeah, yeah, I. I I, I saw a picture. What was he doing? So it was on the hey. Intel booth for the three days in the afternoon, and he was doing a uh, how to build a PC thing. So the first day that was uh, X299 platform with uh, the Thermaltake core mm -hmm. and like an all-in-one and things. Uh, it was a little bit uh, hectic at the beginning. They had some issue with the stream to start with. Then they had some some uh, trouble with uh, how to fix the all-in-one in there. It was not f like fitting correctly where it was supposed to be, but well, that's no, that's that's what happened when you do uh, something live. Uh, the <laughs> second day that it was a regular, I think, Z370 system, something like a like Cofield -like CPU in that. Very ba very basic one in like smaller case as well. And the third day I can't remember because I was uh, I didn't even want to see it. But um, awesome guy, awesome dude, always uh, always fun to talk with. Um, it was super happy about the the few different things that were uh, being made this year, especially with the bench table. I mean, we talked about the bench table for quite some time. I was it was like, oh man, dude, I love this one. It's so cool. I was like, yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. Actually, people love it. That's uh, that's cool. And. Yeah, actually, he's working on building a new PC in the next few weeks. That because uh, everything that he's building on is like a Pokemon, Pokemon themed Pikachu style. Right. So he's uh, right. starting to. He might be building something, some a new PC. If you check his uh, his, cha his personal channel, not the Linus Tech Tips one. Oh wow! Doing some uh, okay. some of the things. So that's when he was streaming as well, like this week after coming back from the from the convention. Yeah, because I heard something about like his the. There was, I mean, I couldn't catch his uh, the whole demo thing, but there was some talk about something went wrong and stuff like that. But I'm sure. So it was basically that the AI or not more, not 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 mounting correctly and stuff like that. So I, I mean, I actually read something about it not happening properly the way the, the way it was supposed to and things like that. So right, it's okay. I mean, that's that's what happened during event. That's what happened yeah, during live. Yeah, so it's, no, what do you expect? It's not, yeah. That, that's pretty much what uh, what will always happen, and I mean we we know that very well. <laughs> I mean, Bill you know that you do quite some live. Uh, I know that very well. To you should do that as well from time to time. You know, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Now, whenever your live stuff just does not work the way you intend it to work, just, that's just Murphy's law. Whenever shit can go wrong, it will, especially yeah. live. Yeah, true. That, that's that's so true so yeah that was a uh, that was awesome time I, I told you guys i spent most of my time with uh with Ustan, the the birded guy on the on the right side awesome dude yeah. like he's from um uh, from around seattle in uh, in the us uh he's uh -huh. streaming on puget sis i think he was streaming uh -huh. just earlier as well and uh awesome oh. guy just spent like an awesome weekend with with him just going around we saw some of the guys uh stefan we saw um beat with kyle's uh we saw jace to send as well we had some uh some link with them. That was cool. That was good stuff. Yeah, yeah. A lot of random people as well. Like we met, like we met dogs as well. But yeah, a uh, lot of random people that are uh, around the show, like super positive and and really liking that. That's actually super refreshing. Super That's, refreshing. I can, I can, I, I can imagine. And the one thing that I even, even I caught from the, you know, the the, the brief stuff that I saw online and uh, live and stuff is that is that just it's 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 the whole 
like you said, the whole vibe of the place was just super friendly and like people were having fun and there was no like, it, it would seemed very well managed as well, actually. And lots and lots of crowd too. So yeah, it was nice. I mean, I was surprised by, there was some stuff because there were so many people uh, at yeah. the convention and so few security lines. So there was huge uh -huh. lines, huge but otherwise lines. that was super nice. Like the, the panels, it's like, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking about rewatching some of the panels online because they were all, um, or all streamed. There was one panel, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there was one panel for how to build a PC. That is the the one right after that picture. Uh, on how was that like? Okay, that was on Friday evening. They had this like a uh, official party, and that was at uh -huh. the Queen Mary in um, in Long Beach. So the Queen Mary is uh -huh. a haunted um, ocean cruise boat. Yeah, cruise boat. So basically, that was like there was someone that died there, blah blah blah, and things. I didn't knew the story at first, so I was like, yeah, okay, that's a hunted boat Ooh, bah. but um <laughs> but the guys there like the the crew there they were like they were really like into it that was super nice and at the end of the show we saw that guy he was actually sleeping standing <laughs> and there was this like this zombie lag behind him <laughs> it was like ah oh, must be freaky when you wake up <laughs> oh i can imagine i can truly imagine and there was oh yeah actually i'm Seeing the, I'm showing the pictures, but you guys can't see it. So that was quite useless for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> that was oh, this, no, uh, yeah. I was wondering so when yeah, you'd that, noticed that. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, I, I get confused with the studio in OBS. I've got the stream open as well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was like a how to build a PC thing. And uh, so that was uh, Leslie from AMD. There was like Erika. That was the same team as that was doing the the show last year. That was uh, Femstaff as well. So quite a quite a few. Uh, there was like only a girl, a girl panel. So that yeah. was very nice to have like a, actually a woman talking about PC building. That was super nice. And I was actually at the front row because I I knew I knew most of them. Uh, I knew especially Leslie because I had a, I did host the panel at PAX with her, and I was like okay. I, I was I knew what they were doing and I was on the live chat like answering all the questions on my cell phone because the live chat was like nonstop topping the asking question and things. Turns out there's a lot a lot of people asking to to get help, uh, especially for Twitch streamers on how to build a PC. That was quite a quite a quite a thing. So there was some Vega on and yeah that was a nice panel actually. Uh, um, I enjoyed it. I wish there was more. Uh, more technical it is to it, but I think in one hour for a panel that's a little bit too too hard to do. Maybe in two panels that could that could be done. Uh, and one thing, the highlight of my weekend was the paint with Bob Ross thing. <laughs> so uh, Bob Ross is like the uh, that's a very old uh, presenter for a TV show, and uh, he's he's not here anymore. I mean, he's not uh, he's not alive anymore. But the the show still here on Twitch, and that was like, yeah, you can paint something like. A little bit of uh, of blue clouds and and the, uh, and there's no mistakes, just a happy little accident. That was awesome. Like that was one hour. I arrived like ten minutes late. There was still some space. I was like, "Fuck yeah, woohoo!" <laughs> and that was literally like three hundred person, not very keen and and good at drawing anything. They were like painting all together. That was nice. That was nice. Crazy. Some unicorn. <laughs> Oh, uh, and I made uh, I made a special challenge to myself to get all the badges for all the bars at the, at the convention. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, that that was quite some uh, quite some good stuff. So that was a lot of people. That was like super nice vibe, and uh, honestly, that was an awesome weekend. Thank you very much for everyone that that actually passed. There were some of the guests that were asking a question about how to how do you build the that to if you want to stream that kind of things and there was a lot of people that were interested as well on how we do it for the overclocking side so i was actually surprised that there was a lot of people that were asking like okay yeah i know about overclocking but but what you have competition for it like uh yeah we have a world championship for us they were like mind blown all the time that was good <laughs> that's good stuff so yeah, actually if there's uh, any of the guys uh, that join us uh, tonight welcome 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 all right, so that's uh, that's it for TwitchCon. Uh, I guess we can just quickly talk about Taipei 2. Uh, that was last weekend as well. Um, any of you guys want to take it? Um, go for it. Well, 
I mean, this was uh, I I noticed from the pictures that this was happening at the at at the at the Gungwa market, which is insane there yeah, as a location because I if, if if for people who actually been to Taipei and like have gone and checked out where this actually happened, it's one of the largest or the biggest. Like IT component markets you'll ever see in your life, and this was just like right at the entrance of like that that place, and pretty pretty insane location, guys. So yeah, I mean, and so many people turned up. Lucky Luke turned up all the way from Indonesia, like like we were saying. Um, some 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 really awesome stuff going on there, uh, and to do it live in public, like it's that place probably sees like. Ten thousand people a day, literally walk. walk I don't through. know the it's, foot traffic there, but it's insane. I mean, that's the uh, insane, the yeah. go-to place every time we go to Taiwan. That's you have to go to the computer market at least one you when you go to, to Taiwan. No matter how yeah, long you like, stay there, you have to go yeah, there at Gungwa least one. Gungwa is like a it's like a pilgrimage. If you go to Taipei and don't go to Gungwa, it's like going all the way to Saudi Arabia and not going to Mecca for like a Muslim. So it's just you can't you can't not do that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's like true. Time. Yeah. But, <laughs> Yeah, that's. So, uh, but uh, that's. Uh, I, I I like the way that they they were actually outside, which is I think the first world yeah. tour that were outside, and it was raining. <laughs> Let's talk know, about yeah. humidity. <laughs> Taipei humidity anyway is like Bombay. It's like ninety percent all the time, and then if you have rain, that's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. No, that, that that was uh, Actually, that there was, was pictures of like some of the frost buildup on some of the LN2 pots, I and I was that, just I think like, there's some on the on the OCTV like, like page. it's like an, like it was so much. It's crazy. Like, I thought I had it bad. This was yeah, just, like, no. a whole new level. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a solid block of ice. Like usually, like if if you know if you uh, OC like if you use liquid nitrogen in a drier climate. You get a sort of like snow-like buildup, and this looked like a solid block of ice, basically. Oh, it's ice. The same thing happens here in Bombay, bro. It's like I literally have to take like a screwdriver and chip it off. It's not. <laughs> it's not like soft. It's like ice. Because I can literally just blow mine off if I need. No, to. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is like. <laughs> This is like it'll hurt. It, it'll hurt if I throw it at someone. It's like dense shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some good stuff. Oh. That that was good. There was like uh, most of the guys from uh, be, from be from fun cool to do well. like a, a water cooled OC on in like the middle of winter <laughs> somewhere <laughs> outside. <laughs> well, that's not a problem as long as the water is moving. You won't have any issue. Well, or you have some kind of glycol additive and a strong yeah. enough pump. Yeah, yeah, come on. I mean, if if you have like three hundred watts of power being uh, being pushed to that cooler. We'll never have yeah. the time to. Uh, well, unless wait, you stop it. Between your when you're idling, it's pushing like nothing. So, I, I, you know what? I could try this with this winter here. In I, I know you can get like I, I'm pretty sure I have a friend who was running like sub zero water by literally just putting the rat outside in the middle of winter. Yeah, but that was not water. Then that was glycol. No. Well, yeah, obviously not straight water, but. So I, I guess it depends on where you go and do it outside. It's actually doing very yeah. good smoke as well because the the smoke is actually from the uh, Ooh, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the humidity so. in the air. <laughs> if you want good 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 smoky cloudy pictures, yeah, Taiwan's definitely the place. Or like from anywhere with great high humidity. It's like I I open my diwar and it's like you just see like smoke pour out and it's just like. Mm. Whenever that happens, I mean, I actually bench in the monsoon. Whenever I bench, I actually have to run like a dehumidifier in my room with the AC, and the AC is running on dehumidifier mode, and the dehumidifier is running, and that thing will pick up like two liters of water in like twelve hours. Like, and my room is not big. So, <laughs> when you talk about humidity, it's sickening. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite impressive. But I'm I'm I was always impressed by the by how people could actually bench in the, in these kind yeah. of environments. Yeah, I mean, in, yeah. how is it in UK, builds it when you bench with LN2? Is it like a lot of uh, heights as well, or not that It's much? worse than like the Czech Republic. It's worse than that, definitely. But it's I, I don't think it's as bad as Taiwan. And I'm yeah. relatively close to like a large body of water, but it's just like it's not that hot. So ultimately, so much water doesn't build up into the air anyway. True, true, true. I mean, the further the, the further inland you are, I guess, the better off it is. Because I know, I know, like people who bench like in like Delhi and things, like North India, where it's like dry, you've got like maybe five, ten percent humidity. They don't get ice for hours. It's like after like four hours, it's like there's, there's 
yeah, sure, sure, there is ice, but it's I we we get that in like forty five minutes, but they get after four hours, so it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, there's some uh, actually quite impressive stuff. I, I, I say uh, I, I was I said it already, and I will say it again. I'm always impressed by all the people that uh, that you know bench in this kind of environment. I mean, <laughs> especially especially in, uh, I have to say the Indonesian guys. They're, they keep yeah. everything super clean when they're in a comp where they are at the competition. But their lab, yeah. oh my god, that's insane. <laughs> I mean, I wish we could have uh, we could have Alva on the on the show one day and just just can you just give us a tour of the lab and it's like like stuff piled everywhere and then bench station on top of boxes yeah the, and the pictures of like it's literally just stacks of motherboards lying around yeah I remember one day they were benching with the uh, that was like they were the, benching the, on the floor yeah they were they sitting on the floor and benching, benching the platform on the chair I was like guys <laughs> you're doing it wrong in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I've not got to that level yet. Ah, oh, yeah. All right, so that was in uh, in Taipei last weekend, and this weekend that's in PAX Australia, uh, that's in Melbourne, and that's the last one of the year. So that's going to be the last HW but World Tour of 2017. That's the last qualifier for the OC World Championship as well, and that's in Australia. Yeah, down under. <laughs> So down on there with uh, the guys from uh, from Gigabyte, uh, Seasonic, and Alpha Cool, of course, as Intel. So that's gonna be the uh, that's actually going on right now. Uh, I guess that at this time they're actually waking up to go to the trade show. Uh, they yeah. did that yesterday as well. They're gonna do that for the next two days. So this weekend, Saturday and Friday. So if you're at PAX Australia, go see them out uh, big time. That's uh, there's free workshop and uh, and all that. Can uh, talk with the guys, see some uh, LN2 overclocking as well, and if you... and a very very rare motherboard. Yeah, actually, uh, builder, <laughs> let's talk about a little bit about that. So, I, I'm, are you so, jealous? So, like, I've not like I want pictures of that board, <laughs> but I, like I've seen some really bad pictures on Facebook, but it's like I want proper close-ups of everything. Um, there's a like I. It's cool that Gigabyte does this, but the fact that they don't sell these just royally annoys me, right? So, That's like Gigabyte That's okay, okay, okay. okay, guys, guys. Uh, for all the people that join us, because I th I'm thinking yeah. about uh, Notorious Norman and uh, Serveling Spoon that I met this weekend, and they come here for the first time, what are we talking about right now? The so, latest SOC LN2 motherboard from Gigabyte. On. Yeah, for Z three seventy, which they're not they gonna sell because yeah. they're gigabyte. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so gigabyte item. made up this special <laughs> uh, two uh, LN two board that they have the tendency of releasing in a very, 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 very small. You basically quantity. have to be friends with somebody at Gigabyte to get one. That's yeah. literally the only way I've heard of. <laughs> seriously, seriously, I mean, there's no way you. I have one yeah, in France, no actually. Way to buy one. That's just impossible unless they are. I do have one in France. I have the Z87 LN2 SOC. Yeah, no, 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 no kidding. They released, they actually released one of them. They released the Z97 LN2. They did. They did. But they did. then. Was that the Z97 or the Z87? That then, was the no, one that was, was on sale on UX for like two version? hours. That, that was never the one went that didn't retail. Have holds. Yeah, there was they the one that Z87 have. that never went retail. Z97 did go retail. Um, Z170 never went retail, and Z270 doesn't exist, yes. and Z370 doesn't go retail. Well, as of right now, it's not going retail. I don't think they'll change their mind about that. For some reason, when you make a motherboard with two memory slots and you aren't Asus, they don't sell. And I've actually, Asus recently, actually, like, the new Apex has a lot more gamer features on it than, like, the previous Apex. So you can already see it's just, like, you can't, like... The, you can't just, just make don't sell. And, and, yeah. 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 Which, yeah. So I get that Gigabyte doesn't make these retail because it's just like they're expensive to manufacture, but it's still it's like, I want the damn board. <laughs> yeah, same here. Like, just put it out there. Well, well, like, you know, just, just, as, just as, I mean, just something that you can even do a, do a AB with. Just like do a comparison just for your own personal knowledge sake. You know? Yeah. And, and basically what makes these special is they have like, 
like this one especially, like you have all the little voltage read point plugins and then all the gigabyte loves buttons, which I agree with them <laughs> on that. It's just like they basically cram <laughs> every function the BIOS has onto the motherboard physically, like the, the really important ones. So it's like, yeah, I love that. Um, so I'd love to get a chance to use one of these. And then always it's an SOC board, so it's a 2DIM, which uh, that always like leads to much better memory overclocking. And it's just like, I'd love to see one of these retail because it's yeah. just like gigabyte hasn't really been competitive in, on like the retail side of motherboards like there's special editions that nobody gets to play with those those have been great but it's, <laughs> the, the stuff you can actually buy is like like on z170 until they released what they re did release a four dim version of the z270 soc and the uh the gaming five and the like for a four dim board the the soc was great for a four yeah. dim board but it's a yeah. four dim so it's bad by like, like by, by over extreme overclocking standards, being a four dim motherboard, it's like you lost before you even started. So, I mean, I just wish that maybe do like okay, if you do if if you do like a hundred, which you you know you're gonna give out to people and stuff like that, then maybe just do another hundred that you do sell, and then once they're gone, they're gone. But no, but like, there. but the problem is like if you make a really low volume product, like a lot yeah. of the retailers won't even buy it off you. That's the problem. Right, like that, that's been then, a problem. Then with some... just just cut the iterator and just sell them directly. I don't understand why they don't sell it directly. I mean, yeah, okay, Galaxy they don't have selling their... freaking or, special edition it, GPUs okay. for. You know what? <laughs> let's do it. I can sell them. Yeah, I can sell them. As long as I don't have to pay for the stock, I can sell them. <laughs> it's basically you sell board, and it's like I sell one, I buy you one, and that's it. And you tell me how much stock you have. Yeah, I, yeah. If they don't want yeah. to take care of that, I can take care of it. Same for the, uh, there was the same issue with the e-power from EVGA that were not on sales anymore. And I told, I told a lot of people, if we can solve some of the issue for the community, I will sell them. No problem. I can sell them. Yeah. But you have to deliver them to me and I cannot buy 10, 10 100 of them. That's not going to work. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, but they it like, is hard. I mean, do the Galax thing. Like Galax thing just sells like the OC Lab Edition GPUs through their own store. Yeah, but Galax and Gigabyte is not the same scale. True. I mean, Galaxy is huge. Yeah, which a lot of people in the West don't realize because they're uh, they're like a big Chinese brand. But yeah, Galaxy is absolutely massive. massive. They're, they're yeah. like huge. The they, aren't they like one of the top GPU? They're I'm not they sure are, which I think position. They're, they're tier one for the. G they're not manufacturing all the GPU. Let's face it, but they're selling the most. Yeah, that that's just like the, uh, they're think, in China. Uh, they sell a truckload. It's them, yeah. It's them, and it's, it's like colorful. Fire. Like colorful is also a, a huge in China, and nobody knows them. It's nobody just, knows it's them. just because they don't meet the standard for being outside, and they don't know how to do the marketing outside. I mean, you you have seen that with some of the board. It's like, yeah, these crazy features that. Mm, what? Well, recently, recently, Colorful is now pushing into the Western markets as well. They have um, to because in China it's becoming, have, yeah. becoming saturated because China was always yeah. growing as a market and now it's stabilizing as well. So they have to just do somewhere else. Oh my God! Thank you very much, uh, Swirl, Swirl, Swirling Spoon for the subscribe. I appreciate, it, man. It was <coughs> awesome to uh, was awesome to, to to see to see you doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So yeah, um, Colorful was. I mean, they came up with. I think that was Computex like four years ago. And they, they had this 570 or six, uh, 680 uh, graphic cards that had like this air cooler <laughs> or water massive, cooler or yeah. GPU pod. And the thing was was weighting like six kgs. You don't yeah. care also about the colorful, weight if you ship in China. Colorful, but like, if you ship outside, that's never going to last. They made a GTX 680 that was completely passive and they didn't underclock it. It was full freaking speed. And it was like five slots big and it was huge <laughs> and passive. Like, I love some of the stuff they, they've come I up love with. Some, yeah, me like, too. They, it's they, like, they see them. Something. And they are planning on expanding into the, um, uh, like they recently sent a review sample to like Gamers Nexus who are a uh, American publication. So nice. yeah. Uh, sure. So they For are sure they planning to, to. They need to get into the the Western market. Yeah. They, they I, have I, to we saw Galax do this recently as well. Like they also were like they they basically didn't exist in the West, and then they suddenly popped up with like well under in Europe they were as KFA two for ages, and they yep. keep rebranding because Galaxy they're like there's a issue with their name in Europe. So well, guess <laughs> why? 
the the thing is in China you won't care about that. I mean, you don't care right. about branding, you don't care about that because anyway, like it's it's just a matter of w- how much you can sell. If, if you can sell thousand and thousand and thousand of units and someone is trying to use your name, there's nothing you can do. But yeah. now that the market is becoming a little bit different, it's changing as well. Still it's big, but it's changing. Mm-hmm. Um they they can have to go to look for this like top tier market which is uh western western um like countries like europe and north america and of course with that they will be able to have some higher prices less volume but higher prices and don't forget like all this industry was always based on lower prices lower margin but more volume so this is changing the game as well so that's going to be interesting to see how they can face up uh, against some of the uh, some, of we the might get a companies. new we might get a new mobo maker since colorful does make motherboards. I don't know if they're good. <laughs> I hope they are. Uh, the <laughs> thing is, kind of boring when it's like, okay, we have an Asus board, we have an Azeroth board, we have a Gigabyte MSI. Done. I mean, right? look, look for it. I mean, except the tier two that you just named, like Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI. Uh, Asrock is there, fourth. Uh, ECS is gone. Biostar is gone. They don't do pretty much anything. That they're, it's almost impossible to find them on stores. Uh, Super Micro used to be to be used to be only the server. They tried to do gamings, but doesn't seem to catch it, up. It never worked out. Yeah, and they actually made some pretty interesting boards, weren't they? The they were the first. They to were do the, the first one to have the non K overclocking thing. In yeah, them. and it's like everybody forgot. Like nobody actually knew that they they were the first to come out with that. Like, but if we look on, on that, Colorful is doing motherboard. Uh, but low features, uh, super bling bling. Yeah, they're like they like they make the the stuff that we're seeing now on motherboards, where everybody's like, "Oh, RB, RGB out the wazoo." Colorful invented yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's actually they invented the brand name, colorful. Yeah, colorful. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, their name is RGB. You no, know but it Kundan line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good to see them doing it. That's great. Uh, Galax tried to do motherboard. They stopped for a few reasons, mostly because I think they are too close from Nvidia and they don't want to have this, uh, you know, like uh, Nvidia and AMD and Intel to deal with all that. Or maybe because right. uh, they were in China, it's not very important for them to do that because all the other manufacturers are already very strong, and they, for for them, it's easier to b- b- bunny up or actually piggyback on some of the other cells on the motherboard, which is very s- slow compared to the GPU. Yeah. So it's more like, hey, there's more money to be made in GPU. Let's focus our resources in doing GPUs and memory and keyboard and mouse and a ton of other shit around that we have more margin because that's uh, especially like the wise. mice and keyboard is like, we're seeing everybody pick that up. Like Gigabyte because has mice. Easy. It's super yeah, because you don't if actually make you want, them. You just you want buy your like, brand? Them off the shelf and slap your yeah. name on it. I mean, OEM for keyboard is insane. I mean, I, I yeah. can just open the catalog and say, okay, I want RGB. Uh, I want this. I want uh, this color of plastic. Uh, do I want a removable um, uh, p- uh, power plugs or USB plugs? Mm. Uh, do I want USB 3 or USB 2 on it? Uh, yeah, okay, sure. So that's why yeah, like all can, these, can, all these they push the software for it. That's one of True. the reasons why they push the, the software for it. Anyway, it's been 43 minutes and it's a good 20 minutes we're talking about that. That's very interesting, but we need to get on with the show. So we're talking about the... uh, Coming back to not China, but actually the OC World Championship last qualifier in Australia. Uh, That's at PAX Australia in Melbourne up until uh, Sunday evening. So if you're in Melbourne, around Australia or at PAX, go see the guys, give them a shout out. And uh, of course, you can win some... I think there's some swag to, to to win as well. As usual, a lot of uh, interesting panels and uh, things going on. So we can't wait to see what will be going on with the OCWC, so the Overclocking World Championship last qualifier. And we'll be able to join to join the other guys actually flying all the way from all the different parts of the world. And to join in, uh, that's going to be in Germany, beginning of December. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. good stuff. Good stuff coming on. <laughs> I can't wait to see uh, who's going to... Uh, who's going to be the winner of that. Actually, do you guys have a, any uh, bet on who can win the OCWC qualifier? Um, uh, I heard High Cookie is benching. <laughs> High Cookie is what? part of the sponsor. He cannot bench for oh, the OCWC. No. So, okay, so I got bad information then. Um, he's benching. He's benching for sure. He's going to be benching at the performance he's not matter competing, night. Yeah. Now, if he was competing, I'd say him because <laughs> he designed those motherboards. 
That would yeah. be a one-sided I mean, slaughter. <laughs> definitely one of the Aussie crew, like Matt or one of them. I mean, that my yeah, or like, Matt or yeah, Neil. From, so zero yeah. plus zero or uh, fat boy not so slim. Fat, fat boy not so slim. Maybe that could be like I don't know, like someone from like Dinzo. I don't know if Dinzo is there, but is uh, Dinos, what, can, Dinos, I mean, Dinos cannot, can Dinos is part cannot, of the sponsors. He cannot bench. participate. Yeah, yeah, he can yeah. bench. Yeah, he can bench. So we'll see, we'll see. But actually, speaking of high cookie benching, uh, before we switch to the next topic, um, there's going to be the performance matters. The third one is called Six by South Wharf. Uh, that's going to be with Intel, HWBot, Aorus, and Seasonic. Uh, and there will be, uh, so that's something very cool. Uh, I, I was not able to speak about anything about that before, but that's awesome. So they will be doing live streaming with Loserfoot, which is a very famous streamer from Australia. She has like, a, I think it's over like four, 400,000 followers. She's yeah. going to be playing she's going to be playing Overwatch on a system that is uh, based on Cofidex CPU overclock at 6 GHz. So there will be she will be playing and streaming from the same system that is overclocked under LN2 by iCookie. That's crazy. Oh, that's why they needed him. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to not crash. <laughs> so, so that's going to be interesting to see. That's going to be the, uh, the Core i7-8700K. I'm very stoked to see that. That's going to be tonight. So that's going to be tonight. So it's 6 p.m. right here in, uh, in Eastern. That's going to be around 1 a.m. my time here. So uh, North America Eastern time. That might be in the early morning for you to use and uh, late yeah. night for, for you build in uh, in Europe. So the, the, I can't wait to see. Like, honestly, I want to see that. That's so cool. Yeah, me too. That's so I've cool. had the idea, but it's just like, for me, it's a waste of LN2. <laughs> I mean, for, for you, there is no point. But I mean, for demos and trade shows. Yeah, I mean, for demos, fun. it's cool. That's yeah, going to be fun. Yeah, I mean, if I yeah. was at a trade show, I, you know, it would make sense to do, but nah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if you guys want to check that out, I think that's going to be on the Loser Food channel, but we will be re-hosting that channel uh, anytime she go live, uh, just to make sure that you guys can catch it as well on uh, on OCTV. And I wish, like, honestly, I wish I could have, like, a commentary stream as well about what's going on. But the thing is, it's overnight here, and I'm doing a demo tomorrow here in Montreal, so that's not going to happen, sadly. So, yeah. Uh, sorry guys, but uh, if actually any of you guys want to be uh, commenting live about what's going on, be my guest, I can hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's going to be it for, for it. And yeah, that will, uh, that's going to be managed by uh, High Cookie, which is uh, okay. used to be the uh, best overclocker in the world and now is just uh, working for Eros Gigabyte and it's uh, part of the... Big he makes those motherboards the, they yeah. don't sell. <laughs> <laughs> he makes them for him. He makes oh. motherboards and a few to use. <laughs> yeah. oh. All he right. recently broke the W Prime record and then eventually lost it shortly after, but... Well, that's, yeah. that's it how it works it was, usually, yeah. Yeah, I mean, with Coffee Like Just Launch, we, we haven't seen the top of the binning yet. Yeah. All right, Talking um, about yeah, talking about the breaking world record, what happened recently? Yeah, I mean, Dan Cop's gone on a rampage. Nothing unusual, but it's the usual Dan Cop rampage. <laughs> Dan Cop I mean, finally has some time to benchmark. All the scores go down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> went away. Actually, Arsenino, Arsenino recently took, uh, overtook him for a little bit until Dan Cop finally yeah. got in his uh, benching it's weekend, like, I guess. Fine. Let's just bench. And he's actually hitting Vantage right now as we speak, probably. But um, 7.3 gigahertz was a monster, monster Pi fast run. Like I was referring to him as uh, Dan Cop Sam earlier on, you know, <laughs> just because. It... Wait, isn't the world record for the 7700K in Super Pi at 7.3? Yeah, there's no XP you yet. You could so rematch that god. Like, you could, really? He, yeah. That because chip on liquid helium might break, would be able break. to blow it away. True, true. because the, because the 7740X. Be actually, actually, that's insane because the max frequency it's, for that CPU is 7.4. So <laughs> yeah, he's got so close to the 7.4 on liquid helium from uh, from Roman, from uh, Derbao. That's, that's just sickening. Sickening. Yeah, I mean... If, if if he has XP, I can just see SuperPy. This is this is an early right chip. Now. This is yeah. a really early chip. I wonder if Intel. I mean, they are pushing this as like an even further refinement of their 14 nanometer. 
I wonder if we won't be seeing these things hitting like seven and a half by the I end mean, of the imagine season. Imagine that. Stepping A. Imagine stepping C. Yeah. If they make some revision yeah. that don't trigger any, uh, that's that's good. Like the process is still being refined. I mean, come on. Yeah. That's yeah. that's not a completely I mean, right new now, process. There's, there's as basically well. no chips available because they're so low production. Like they they're still really low production volume. But still, or... I mean, it's not a completely new process as well. It's the, uh, yeah, I know, but, but plus they, like we saw, like Skylake to KB Lake was what 500 megahertz bump or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it was like 500. Yeah. yeah, this is another revision. Admit, I you know I don't think 500 would be very realistic, but it could happen. <laughs> it could yeah, happen again. And, yeah, you know. and then Cop saying in the chat that that 7.5 should be possible easy on helium. That that that's just. Well, I hope and we get an, uh, I hope Asus uh, gives him some decides to spend a lot of dollars <laughs> on <laughs> tank on helium, helium guys. Soon. That that's so expensive. I, I know wish, it is. I wish <laughs> what we do because if that's gonna be the case to you to be using more and more, I wish we can have something to re to get back recapture the helium it. that is being used to recapture the helium. Yeah. The problem yeah. is yeah. it's yeah. like it yeah. like it the the expansion of it is so massive. Like Yeah, it's like three times the LN2 thing. Uh no, it's one You need like a freaking two, eight, massive compression plant. Yeah. You you needed like some massive compress uh, compression and re reliquid like you, you can't can. even hold it liquid. It doesn't stay it's liquid. It's 1 to 757. So for one liter of LN of uh, liquid helium, you will have the equivalent of seven hundred and fifty-seven liter of air. Well, yeah. yeah, like y y you know, like if you want to recapture it as a gas, you're complete. Like you can, like you, you basically whatever would be capturing it would have to be right next to the LN2 pot to have any rate of success. Oh, you need to have a closed system with like a huge tank for expansion and things. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, as yeah. Dan Cobb oh, says, yeah, the, it's about... the kingpin cooling yeah. approach. <laughs> yeah, as Dan Cobb says, it's about 18 euros per liter and you need 30 yeah, liters 30 for one pi fast. One, 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 okay, okay, we're talking about pi fast, which is about... 540. Which is fast. Seven seconds. Like, that was the point. Seven seconds, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. It's... yeah, so you're talking about 540 euros for maybe... Four seconds, three seconds, uh, seven uh, seconds. Uh, like, huh? Break that down into euros per second. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that we we're gonna find if if that's becoming more of the norm, uh, there's no way we can use liquid helium all the time. I mean, it's a finite resources yeah. that's gonna be completely. Yeah. It, it would be yeah. stupid from us to use that more more than just Agreed. a few. It's a very valuable resource. Uh, and few marketing stuff. Yeah. But yeah. uh, what yeah. what could be done is maybe that we're gonna have some new improvement on how we use the liquid, uh, the LN2 and all that. LN2 we don't care. That's something like nitrogen is something you brace for like 74, 75 percent right now. It's super easy. It's it's yeah. almost free. It's as a, a byproduct of di distilling for all the other gases. Yeah. Like they they want oxygen and the other rare stuff from the atmosphere. And, but they it. create LN2 a lot for that. So it's more yeah. Like... You because the easiest way to do it is you capture like you condense everything. Into yeah. liquid, and then you uh, distill you separate. it. Separate, yeah, you separate that per phases, and the... but so they end up with a ton of liquid nitrogen, and then it's like, well, what are we gonna do with this? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, but I don't like. There's not much you can do to make liquid nitrogen go lower. Hmm. Uh, you can reduce the, um, reduce the pressure. Yeah, you can reduce, reduce the pressure, the pressure but yeah. you're gonna maybe like go to negative two hundred and five. So that's not gonna be much. Uh, but what you could do is maybe to have a system that use less of it or more efficiently. So like something that push the LN2 inside a specific like vacuum, whatever thing. So I don't know. <coughs> because I mean, nitrogen, as we say, that's, that's super, uh, I mean, that's, that's super easy to produce. Uh, I got the real numbers. It's like 78.09% of nitrogen is what you're breathing right now. We just turned yeah. that one into liquid by cooling down the air, like literally. There's a you can actually buy like standalone machines that'll do liquid nitrogen. Yeah, they're not even that big. They're really expensive, but they're not big. It's quite expensive. It's yeah. not super efficient because actually, well, uh, yeah. like the amount of LN2 we use, it's too much over a small time, which is not something you can actually use for. Hey, I want twenty liters. Start two hours after two hour two hours after that, we won't have twenty liters. Um, <laughs> oxygen is about twenty percent in the atmosphere. Uh, 0 0.93 argon, which is a small gas, 0.04% of about carbon dioxide. So that 0.04% is actually responsible for the uh, um, ozone thing and the warm-up and the climate change and all that. 
as part of the other one. And <clears throat> everything else, everything else is other kind of gas. So in yeah. those other kind of gas, you have uh, helium-2, which is 0 0.000055%. Um, what's the KR? Kriggen? Kar? Kar? Eh? Uh -huh. KR. I'm not a chemist, man. You well, can't anyway. He's at me. <laughs> so neon is about 0 0.0018. Uh, uh, helium, as I say, is 0 0.00524. And methane, which is like a, the, the coal fart, is a 0 0.00179, <laughs> which is a very high uh, uh, density gas for. Um, uh, I, I don't know the, the French name for that, the effet de serre, like the. Global warming. Yeah, yeah, global, yeah glo the, the thing that uh, produces global warming. Anyway, yeah. so yeah, helium. The uh, the thing is uh, finite resources, so that's uh, not the best thing we could uh, we could have. So, uh, what other score did Dan Cup add? And then after that, he killed the Uni Engine world record as well with the old 1080 Strix uh, 1080 Ti's, and then he killed the 3D Mark 11 world record as well. <laughs> and knowing him, he's proceeding to kill the Vantage world record as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Dan Cup can confirm that in the live chat <laughs> that's actually uh, the, the system is like quite insane there's a lot of ice everywhere look at that like the ice is like all over the cards that's sickening he's under in, un, under insulating like if I ran if I ran a system like that I'd be worried it would stop working yeah, actually, Dan Cup, uh, why do you... Uh, wait, can you confirm that you're actually breaking Vantage right now? And that's the first thing. And the second one is, why do you use so little of insulation? Just because you don't care or because you were not planning to bench that much with it? Because as he's on the live chat, you can answer us now. Uh, both cards are still alive. Yes! Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, I'd, I'd believe that. I mean, I actually benched a card with no insulate. Like, ba basically, all the insulation was just blue shop towel and praying that I don't crash it. <laughs> like, the, that it doesn't uh, doesn't build up too much water too quick. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... But it's like, I personally prefer... Like, I really do wrap my uh, LN2 pots in... Well, especially, like, the GPU pots. I have, like towels on them to make sure that like they don't get too covered in ice it doesn't work out like gpu pots are a pain to insulate yeah. they really are yeah. the cpu yeah. pots is easy especially roman cpu pots because well the fusion at least because it comes with all of that foam packaging and you can just reuse that as the insulation yeah. um and that basically stays completely dry even benching full pot but gpus it's like yeah they're a problem because of the shape so Properly wrapping them up is hard. Yeah. All right. So, uh, interesting. He says that uh, I insulate yeah. all the card with Plasti Dip, which is like a, uh, a spray or liquid tape, everywhere, like everywhere, everywhere, my friend. And says that yesterday my even score was nothing on the board was insulated. I was like, Fuck. actually, I'm that's surprised. very interesting because if you look at the card, he's using the um, the 1080 Ti from Asus, yeah, and the yeah. core clock is at 2455. And if we think back at Stepanzi's core, it was at 2465. So that's 10 megahertz core off from it. But uh, Stepanzi was 100 megahertz higher on the memory. He was at uh, 16, almost 1600, right? 1640, I yes. think. Yes. And, yeah, uh, 1639. Yeah, and 1639. Yeah, thanks. And Dan Cobb is at fifteen fifty two, so that's a uh, one megahertz, uh, one hundred megahertz, like lacking behind on the on the memory side. So we'll see. Uh, what Step ones was twenty four ninety three on core clock for those GPUs. He has a so that. Well, I hope Dan can uh, chase that down, or it'll be a lot of tweaking before he breaks <laughs> that score. Though I guess you could just hammer the CPU side of it. Like I mean, Vantage CPU says at five point six G. I mean, for 3D Mark 11, yeah, that wasn't but, that but much. Like, but... if you look at it, step on like Vantage is one of those benchmarks that is like it really heavily favors the CPU by 3D Mark standards, right? Oh. It's not like it still prefers the GPU, but you can win that one if you just get a higher CPU, if you get a big enough CPU score advantage, even if you're not winning the CPU GPU side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he so, says and that uh, Dan Cup says that his card is uh, limited at 1600 max on the uh on the on the on the memory so we'll is that see, uh... with more voltage or just stock voltage 
if if he says that's the maximum, that's that's what he tried. So I guess that's uh, with any, I, anyway with more voltage, that's not going to change much. No, more voltage fixes everything. <laughs> <laughs> For you, up until it burns. <laughs> All right, folks, let's move on to... Voltage. He let's... needs to shove 1.5 volts through the GDDR5X. I'll mod the cards for him. <laughs> I know how to... Let's, uh, let's see what you guys have as a last topic. Who submitted this one? Intel obtained 900p SSD launch. Oh, that's you, to use. That would be... Yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a bit of a storage junkie. But, uh, no, I'm, I mean, I just, I, just, I, I just put this in because it literally is a revolution when it comes to, like, storage. Uh, everything else is everything else, and then Optane is Optane. It's literally, it's it's in a league of its own. And for it to be doing what it's doing to even NVMe drives, this thing is special. It's, it's, it's 4K random reads. That's what, you know, everyday usage is all about, and that's where most, most people, even gamers, it's your everyday usage, and 4K random read is what defines everyday usage. And this is where it's it's just it's it's destroying even NVMe drives. Like your 960 Pro is it's just it's just a normal SSD. Like they every every SSD we know of has been demoted like a notch. You know, it's like wow, because uh, even a 960 Pro it's probably at 70 MB on your 4K reads. This thing is 250 MB on your 4K reads, and that's where the win is. And that ridiculous Q depths like. Uh, it's the drive saturates itself at, at like a Q depth of eight. For people who don't know what Q depth is, it's basically how many instructions you, know, you queue up from your hard drive to process. And uh, most most SSDs, you can you can you can you can you can actually load up enough instructions for it to like you know uh, develop a queue that goes to 16, 17, 18, 20, 32, whatever. And that's at Q depths, higher Q depths drives drives go faster. It's the instantaneous response from all 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 over the place, like random random files everywhere. That's what makes all the difference, and this is where it's it's in a complete league of its own. Sequentials are also very very fast, uh, but just for everyday usage as a boot drive and just as a regular drive, this thing is special. It's just truly special. I mean, two hundred so two hundred eighty gigs for three ninety bucks without taxes. That's still quite high. I mean, it's obtain. I mean, obtain as as a uh, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> Is not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap, but it's no, it's no, not no, like it's the not. Uh, the thousand bucks uh, NVMe SSD yeah. that we have been seeing yeah, I mean, over the past five years. True, and considering they have they had like the three seventy five gig enterprise drive at like seventeen hundred dollars, this isn't bad. I hate this autoplay video, really. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's uh, you can see they're actually crushing the uh, also, in terms of uh, and also one of the best thing, yeah, also one of the best things about 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 Optane is it just does not it just does not um, degrade like your flash like your SSDs like whether it's empty or whether it's full it's running at the same speed regardless so there is no degradation of performance doesn't need trim doesn't need any of that not nothing it's just maximum performance all the time it's truly truly unlike flash so. That's 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 kind of why I was saying like everything else is everything else, and then now, Optane it's totally in a league of its own. Like, look at that, just, just the steady state performance. Like it's the high there. ups, it's interesting to have like those it's high sickening. high ups, sustainable, sustained, sustainable. We, we yeah. can have the peak for sure, but sustain is like wow. It's it's blown my mind. <laughs> that it's graph is point. like the speak by itself. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Optane is finally here for the desktop. I couldn't be happier. Now it just needs to get cheaper. <laughs> now it just needs to get cheaper. Very true. Very, very true. Wow, that's a... Uh... Did I just get invited I... to bench four-way on the chat? <laughs> <laughs> you just got invited, yes. <laughs> so we, we just had uh, something. Okay, so uh, one of the next few lives we will be able to see is Bill Zuid and Dan come benching together four-way. <laughs> That'll be a catastrophe. <laughs> okay, let, let's do it. If if you build do it, go problem, to Dan. Like, okay, like, okay. I, 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 I can say like... that. I can say that on the USC show. If you build do it, go to Dan Cup, or Dan Cup goes to your place, and you do that. I take care of the stream. I can take care of the stream for you guys, and you just have to take care of benching. <laughs> I I just admitted that I'm probably just gonna run LN2 for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. That that was a. 
quite a lot of uh, information this week. Uh, it's been a good hour that we are actually in the show. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. If you have any suggestion for next week, you can always uh, suggest that in the uh, suggest box that we just posted on the uh, on the live chat. And if you are watching this one on YouTube, you can just ask your question in the comment below. We always uh, have a quick look at that. Uh, it was a quite nice, uh, quite quite nice uh, four season. 15, 15th episode of the OC show with you guys. Uh, we're going to go right back after the after party, but we're just going to cut the recording for YouTube and all that. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, big shout out to all the guys and uh, newcomers that uh, shout out to us this evening or that just followed us. Uh, Bast, We, Serving Spoon, Goof Bandidon, Username Plus Plus, Mighty Tarl, and Toothless Next. Thank you very much, guys, for the for the follow. Uh, big up to Serving Spoon that actually is now a subscriber on the channel. So we can't wait to see you guys more in the next OC show. That's going to be next week, Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And that's going to be same place, same guys, and different topic, of course. Up until next time, keep pushing it.